Thank you very much for joining us. Now let's begin with insecurity, especially kidnapping. Some years back, it was in citizens' cold clashes, and now one-term kidnapping is giving residents of Ikorodu area of Lagos, southwest Nigeria, sleepless night. Residents of our solo area of Ikorodu have raised the alarm over increasing rates of kidnapping in the community. After cases of kidnapping in our solo on the 23rd and 26th of March, another case was recorded in Mwekekere on the 6th of April, prompting residents to call on the government to beef up security in that area. TVC News senior correspondent Ivy Kano was in Ikorodu in the week for an update on the situation. Let's share the story with you. Days after sending a distress call, TVC News crew decided to visit the troubled area. It was a long drive navigating from Agri bus stop through Ishawa Road to Asolo. The residents have been eagerly waiting for us. We were told that in a space of four days, two members of the community were kidnapped. Though they have regained their freedom, but it has left those still living here in constant fear. Most homeowners have vacated their buildings. Surrounded by forest area, the community is finding ways of securing themselves. The workers that just passed are those that the community has engaged to help them clear this large bush which has been here for years. Now we are told that usually they resume at 7 a.m. and close about 3 p.m. This time we were told the kidnappers are not making use of boots as they used to but will rather their victims trekked for hours inside the thick, swampy forest. While Oyakilome's wife was kidnapped and released last week, Mr. Lajide was a victim in 2016. They came uh, into my compound and uh, my wife tried to drag with them, but she couldn't succeed, no help her. So they took her to, to the swampy area for four days. I was with them for about seven days before being released. And that particular place, even the reporter is moving, everywhere is close up. We are by anything up, we not see the down. They say though the Lagos State Police Command is doing its part, but much more can be done. It's not what the community can actually handle for themselves. Because we get to see that, look at the standard at which we are living here. Manpower is not the solution. We need government to use tractor to produce. If you see your back, you see every bush there. Armed with requests, we proceeded to speak with the Commission of Police, who says he's making efforts to ensure the area is adequately secure. One striking thing is that residents build their house very close to the swamp forest. I think there's need for us to work on clearing the, the swamp forest. The families were not forthcoming with information on whether ransom was paid. Ivy Kano, TVC News, Lagos. Senior correspondent Javi Kano there. Gentlemen, uh, well, Ikorodia has always been a den of kidnappers. It may have reduced at some point, but sadly uh, it's coming back. Bikil. Yes, um, it's a real concern for Lagos. I have repeatedly criticized Northern leaders, including opinion holders, governors, and political office holders, especially from the Northwest and even North Central, for allowing kidnapping to degenerate to the point that we have found ourselves now. Mm. It would degenerate if tough actions are not taken to nip the problem in the bud. When we allowed Boko Haram insurgency to fester, when we held back from crushing them completely at the beginning, you can see what we have on our hands now. Mm. During this weekend, they ambushed a colonel and some soldiers and you based it and kill them. Kidnapping 
is now like um, second nature in some states of the Northwest and North Central, like Niger, Kaduna, Kasina, Zamfara, even Sokoto. There are at least five local governments in Sokoto where the Napas are very active. A lot of those stories you don't read in the newspapers. Mm -hmm. Local governments like Tureta, Sabombrine, Isa, Dandume in Kasina. Bandits are running rampant. We don't want that to happen in Lagos. The Southwest is the most secure geopolitical zone in our country. But if we don't take strong steps, they will come to Lagos. The more success they record, the greater their encouragement to continue. That's what usually happens with criminals. If you allow them to get away with kidnapping people in an area, they will, they will keep coming back. They will keep coming back because they know they have nothing to lose. But if you block them, you make sure that they don't succeed. They don't want to go back to that place. So as much as we commend the security uh, operatives in the southwest area, we commend Amotekun for the fantastic work it is doing in Ondo State, especially. Outside of Ondo State, maybe or you're to a large extent, or, or to a considerable extent, Amotekun is active. But if all Southwest governors would strengthen Amotekun, make Amotekun effective the way it's been done in in those states, then we can sit back and beat our chest that our areas are going to be well protected. But that's not what we are seeing. A lot of the governors are playing politics with security. A lot of the governors do not know what is coming. They are busy moving from uh, going to Abuja, turning Abuja to their home, instead of actually sitting here, working here, identifying the problems here and looking for a way to solve the problem. You turn Abuja to, to uh, like your uh, boys' quarters mm. that you can visit to, uh, when you like. No. There are problems here. We need to move quickly before things degenerate. That is the point. It is not when it is now completely out of our hands that these governors will now be running Elta Skelta. I mean, they should show a high sense of responsibility. You are elected to do a job, not to simply turn Abuja to your second home. I mean, it's irritating the way they just keep going there, spend the bulk of their time there, mm -hmm. rather than attend to business of, uh, of state. Here, you allow the roads to degenerate, mm -hmm. but you can have time to attend every conceivable meeting in Abuja. I don't know how we suddenly became like this. To have governors who would not sit down and work in their state is Abuja that they want to go go for. What kind of governors are you people? Do the work, sit down, do the work. Let's not wait until Lagos becomes another casino. Because you'll be in trouble. I am, let, let it be on record that I'm raising this alarm. Because I've heard that even in the uh, Gopalas way area, people are being kidnapped. Mm. A lot of it does not get reported. Because those who should do something are not doing it. They are comfortable turning Abuja to a home. I mean, no, to a, their home. They, some spend more time there than actually in their, states. in their states. We know governors who spend far more time in Abuja than their state. And they know themselves. I, don't, I just don't understand. I'm really scared. Mm. Don't forget even school kidnapping. It's not new in Lagos. Yes, it happened a long time ago. That is not to tell us that it can't happen again. It will happen if we remain complacent. We've got to do something. These governors should put on their thinking caps, busy themselves with 
devising methods and tactics to solve this problem and not wait until it becomes uh, uh, too big to, to deal with. Thank you, Bikio. Uh, Adoye, this is quite worrisome because uh, one chance kidnapping has now been mm. on the increase in Lagos, especially yeah. because security has a community police, and mm. this is still happening. Well, I think just like uh, Baba Jide said, Kaduna was one of the most peaceful states in the north. It's now history. Mm. Plateau was one of the most peaceful places for Europeans from the colonial days. People wanted to settle in just because of the weather. It was so peaceful that, you know, you just feel like going to relax. There people come from yeah. Europe and all that. John Major. John Major lived there. He was there, you know, former, former Prime, Prime Minister, Prime Minister of, uh, of UK. But nobody ever thought that Kaduna will witness what we are seeing today. It means that leaders must have foresight. Yes, Lagos is one of the most peaceful states. But that is not giving. That story can change any moment. And what we are seeing now is that Kaduna can no longer handle what was a minor problem. It has become, it has assumed a life of its own. The potential for security is in every country. But great leaders will think about what can happen in the next 15 years. If you look at Lagos, in the past 10 years, some of us have been doing analysis about threat analysis. There is crisis in the Middle Belt. There is crisis in Maghreb region. There is crisis in West Africa. All of them, when they are displaced, where do they come to? Lagos, because it is the most prosperous environment. That's why when you go to all over Lagos now, you see people from Gambia, you see people from Chad, you see from Niger, if you go out in Lagos in the night, okay. uh, uh, Lagos in the night, go to the market, they don't sleep. While we are asleep, the owners of the land, the strangers are the ones that own the night. And I think that is not a good thing for us because they have to live by all means necessary. They need to spend money by all means necessary. By the time they don't, they don't have access to income, they will turn to whatever it is available. Sometimes I go around Lagos, I see about 20, 30 of them. People from nowhere, just sitting down. They sleep know, in the open. They sleep in the open, go to the market, they oh, are there. Shops and, shops and everything, you know. Apart from the prayer on social utility, they will use water. They will use it, by all means, they can bust pipes and all that sort of thing. The social problem is also there. So Lagos has witnessed dramatic changes in demography in the past 10 years. Mm -hmm. And it's a major threat. It is something that can blow up at any time. What we are seeing in Kurudu is just signal. Just like Agia said, somebody came to visit me about two months ago. On his way, he was kidnapped. A pastor, mm. Mr. Oshan, uh, pastor Shalomo. He was kidnapped. He got, you know, about, in the late night, he was calling me that. They kidnapped him. They took him around ground for about three hours and later dropped him somewhere after they had collected everything that he had. So the potentials, the threat analysis of Lagos is a major thing. For the fact that you are prosperous, you are the richest man in the, in, the, in the street, other people are poor. That does not mean that those are armed robbers will not turn on you, mm -hmm. you know, with the passage of time. So, first of all, I think the Lagos State government should realize that there is a need for home land security department. They should not just be relying on police, on, uh, uh, you know, there is a need for home land security department that must work with communities. When the current president was governor of Lagos State for eight years, he worked with community-based groups, all these uh, pan yoruba groups, so peace and all that. There was a structure that related with him. Anything that wants to happen, the governor will be aware. But when you isolate cultural and you know, social forces, there's no interaction, no engagement, a lot of things will be happening and you are not going to be able to have the right. capacity to deal with the problem. So it's a major problem that is coming, and the island will respond decisively the better for all of us. Well said, gentlemen. I think the takeaway from this conversation is that government swings into action before this uh, for the scales.